Hi everyone and welcome back to Create's Community Arts Grants Info videos. If you haven't watched our overview video, the video about the category that you'd like to apply to, and the partnership video, if it applies to you, please go ahead and watch all of those. Um, those will really help you prepare for this video and understand the entire application process. So in this last and largest video, we're going to be talking about how to apply to the entire program, how it's reviewed, how to do your budget, and a lot more. If you have any questions as you go through this video, feel free to email me. My email will be at the end of this video. So as you know by now, there are three different grant areas you can apply to, being project support, artist commissions, and arts education projects. And again, you can apply to more than one category, but your overall request cannot exceed $5,000 unless you are a fiscal sponsor to multiple applicants. To learn more about the eligibility, again, please go back to those three separate videos about each of these different categories, and that'll give you more specific information. In this video, we're going to be talking mainly about the application process and all of the ins and outs, what to expect, and so on. So first of all, how to apply. Go ahead and visit createcouncil.org, and you can read the grant guidelines there. You can find all of the application links to our online applications. Uh, budget forms that you can download and edit to your project, partnership forms, everything you need will be on the website. Once you've looked through there, then you can watch these videos, which you are currently doing, and determine the eligibility, what category best suits you. And then third, you can optionally attend an in-person Q&A session to ask your specific questions about your project. We're going to be doing Q&A sessions in all three counties, Green, Columbia, and Schoharie counties, and this is a good chance for you to just speak more with other people who are applying, show me any materials that you'd like to get feedback on, and so on. Okay, so to jump into it, the first thing you wanna to do to start your application is go to createcouncil.org, find grants on our menu, click that, and then you'll see community arts grants, it's circled here. And once you click on that, you'll find our entire page with all the information that you need in order to apply. So go ahead and click on how to apply. And then once you're there, you'll find all of the different links to the applications. Um, again, there are the three different categories, uh, project support, artist commissions, and arts education projects. And there's a separate application for each county in each category. So there's a lot of links there, but just try to find the one that's best for you. Once you click on the application link that suits your project, you'll see this screen pop up. I just have the community project support here as an example. But again, there's differences between the three different applications. You can go into that yourself or reach out to me and I can help you with different questions that you might have as you preview it. So this is just the basic requirements for people applying. This we went over in the other videos um, for eligibility criteria and so on. But the important thing here is a lot of people will click on this link, feel like they need to automatically start a profile or start applying right away. And I really recommend just clicking on that little preview. You'll see the arrow pointing to it there. This will just give you a good sense of the entire application. You can read it all the way through and know what you need to answer in the application itself. So once you click that preview, so once you click that, you'll see this pop up and it's all of the questions in the application, a full preview of everything you need to know. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at this. Okay, so just switching to the actual Smarter Select program now. This is that overview page that you'll see here, and here's the preview. So I'm just going to go ahead and click this to preview the entire application. It might take, might take a second. All right, so here is the entire application. It's a lot of questions, but don't worry. A lot of them are simple, and again, if you need any help, feel free to reach out. So the first area is just application info. This is just the basics. Um, so the organization name, address, contact information, any contact information for your partner here. Next up is the project information. So your project title, the project blurb. This is actually going to be important because if you end up receiving the grant, any language we put out about the projects, this will be what we include. Um, so make sure that this you know, fully encompasses every part of your project, summarizes it really quickly and briefly. Next is the organizer or provider name, the number of artists, youth, and other individuals 
I know that sometimes the language here can be confusing. It's because we have to follow different state guidelines and the state requires certain information from us that we need to report about people applying and what projects are happening in our county. So I know often if you're, especially a first time applicant, you don't know the number of artists or youth individuals. Um, so just give it your best guess, really. If you're a continual applicant, just go off of what you experienced in past years. If, you know, of course, COVID impacted that. So just try to balance it as best you can. The number of artists participating or benefiting would be those working in the project itself, those benefiting in any way. And again, the same with youth, anyone included in the project or viewing it, being a part of it in some way, either as audience, participant, et cetera. And then other individuals, that would be your general audience probably. This is a very important part. Make sure to put your full request to the grant program in this area, and please make sure that it matches the number on your budget sheet. This is something that panelists really notice. I see it happen sometimes. If this number doesn't match the budget sheet, that's definitely going to be a red flag for the panelists. I highly recommend actually doing your budget as you do your proposal, just so that you can make sure everything is lining up as best you can. Make sure to take notes and kind of work on both things at once. More basics of your program, like what is your project, where will it take place, when, and so on. These are all, these should all be kept really brief. So this is one question that sometimes people are concerned by. It says, will there be any fees to participate or attend? And if yes, what are they? It is totally okay if you have a ticket fee, um, materials fee, a suggested donation. I will mention though that, these, that this grant program in general, the panelists really look for projects that are accessible and open to the community. So if you do have a ticket price, again, totally okay, but try to make it reasonable to the area that you were in. You'll see this grant seminar attendance. The video that you're watching right now is the grant seminar for this year. So in the past, we've had grant seminars in person, but this year, just to make it easier for everyone, we are doing these videos. So just say, yes, you went to a grant seminar, and then just put the date that you watched this video. Try to write that down if you can. Okay, so moving on to project narrative. This is the real big part of your application, the real meat of your application. So this project description here is where you want to include a full synopsis of everything you're doing, the goals, be specific as possible and be in, as concise as possible. The panel who is going to be reviewing your application often are reviewing dozens of applications at once in one day of a meeting. So it's really just being as clear as possible. It will be really helpful for your application because it'll tell the panel exactly what you're trying to accomplish, what you're trying to bring to your community. Um, so they can just know right away and not have to read pages and pages of descriptions. One important question here, how will you determine the success of your project? This is something that often comes up with the panel. If you have a real solid way to determine that success through surveying um, people who are coming to your events or having some kind of feedback that you get in order to improve, that is really important. This grant in general is meant to help people grow their nonprofit, grow their ideas, um, and act as a stepping stone into larger funding. So really looking for ways that you are going to grow through this, that's important. How will you publicize or promote your project? Again, specifics are a plus. So if you can list the exact types of things that you're going to look for for publicizing your project, like radio ads, um, putting it onto online calendars, reaching out to different press or local newspapers, how many posters you're going to print. Those are all things that I suggest putting in. Okay, so next up is your supporting documentation. One of the most important parts of your application is the budget sheet here. So you can download the template of our budget sheet on our website. And we'll, when we go back to the slideshow, you'll see more detail about the budget and how to fully write it out and everything. But just Keep that in mind for a moment. Here, you'll upload your list of board directors and staff. If you're applying with a partner or sponsor, you'll put that here. 
here you'll put your oops here you'll put your proof of nonprofit status and your proof of residence and then resumes and bios so this could be um, of people on your staff of artists who are going to be working in your project and then work samples work samples are so important this really shows the panel in a visual way, what you've done in the past and maybe what you hope to do in the upcoming year. So for instance, if you are presenting a series of workshops with different artists, show the work that the artists are doing, show images of past classes that you've taught um, or hosted at your organization. Try to include as much as you can and to really give a sense of your entire wonderful work that you do. And here's this section on community partner or fiscal sponsor, documents that you should upload um, for more details about partnerships. We have that separate video that you can go back and watch if you haven't already. Lastly is administrative information. Often people are kind of confused by this. Again, this is something that we have to report back to the state that is required as a NISCA regranting site. Um, and when you're looking at these questions, just try to answer them to the best of your ability. I know sometimes that can be difficult, especially if you're a first time applicant, but if you have any questions, again, just feel free to reach out to me or give me a call. And lastly, signing your grant. So this is the final step is just typing in your name here. This should be the main contact person. Um, and that's the entire application. Okay, let's go back to the slideshow. Okay, so that was just a brief overview of the project support application. The application is the same for all three different counties. So please just make sure to apply to the one that's in your county. It's no different from the others in that same category. Obviously the individual artist application and the arts education applications are different from the project support one that we just looked at. The individual artist application is definitely a bit shorter because you don't have to prove your nonprofit status and so on. The arts education application has different questions regarding your school partnership if you have that, um, your learning standards, and et cetera. So just keep that in mind and feel free to go and pre preview those applications in the same way that we just previewed the one that we looked at together. Okay, so one tip I have for grant writing, when you're looking at that preview of the application that we just looked at together, make sure to copy and paste those questions into a Google Doc or a Word Doc or something and write out your answers in that document. Often people will apply to this program and they will start an application, start typing in their questions, forget about it and close their laptop or lose internet or lose focus, whatever it is, and will end up losing their work. I really don't want that to happen. I know how hard um, you're working to make your projects happen and, and to do the awesome work that you do. So this is just one thing to make it a little bit easier. Okay, so here's our project budget sheet template. This template should be used for all of the different categories, be it project support, artist commissions, or arts education. It looks the same for all of them. And again, just as a reminder, project support grants up to $5,000, artist commissions grants up to 2,500, and arts education up to 3,000. Make sure that you're keeping it under that um, and make sure that the request, which will be added up here, matches that same number that you put in your application form. As I said, panelists will notice that kind of thing if it doesn't add up. So just to briefly go over all the different parts of this budget sheet in front of you, here you have your project title. So this is, you wanna make sure you add your project title and your organization name here, just so we can make sure in case things get shuffled around that we have the right document for you. Here you'll have your expenses, your different funding sources and your explanation for those. So for instance, you could put artist fees and maybe one artist is volunteering. So you could put the in-kind value of their volunteer hours. You have another organization or funder who's giving you funding um, to fund one other artist and then your the create grant is going to fund the final two. Um, in the explanation here, you would put four artists being funded at X amount each. So basically in kind would be volunteered things, um, materials given to you, anything that was kind of free, um, but has a value to it in your project. Other would be any money that um, the organization yourself is adding into this program. 
any grants that you receive that are going to add into this budget. And then finally, that create column here, which just will say how much you're requesting for each of those different expenses through this grant. Some updates for the funding. In the past, there has been a funding match. So the grant could only cover 75% of your entire budget. That is no longer the case. This grant can cover 100% of your budget of your project total. But if you are receiving ex external funding from other grants, sponsorships, whatever it is, please just make sure that you document that in your budget sheet as well. Another update to the budget, you can include materials up to $1,000. So this would be things like expendable equipment, technology, and also preparation or planning and training. So that includes administrative fees. Okay, so here's a sample that we're using. You'll notice this is a bit old because it still does have that 75% um, limit here. So just ignore that. And otherwise we can look so you can see again, the artist fees here, the total is gonna to be 2000 for artist fees. And then it's kind of split between these three categories. And then the explanation is here. Make sure that you're as concise and descriptive as possible in this explanation part here. Panelists really are going to be looking at that section to see what the money is being used for. I will remind you while we're looking at this as well that you should be working on your project budget sheet as you're working on your application to make sure that each item in your budget lines up with something that you're doing in the project. If there's kind of these mystery items here, that's definitely something that panelists will notice. Also make sure that you have the guidelines with you as you're doing your application, as you're writing your project budget. Um, there are a lot of specific things that can't be funded through this program, like food or like magicians, because it's not considered a art practice through NISCA. Um, a lot of strange, small things like that. So make sure you have that, those guidelines just pulled up with you, printed out next to you, just so you can make sure that there are no um, mistakes in this project budget. Another thing that you're gonna want to include in this is your income down here. So everything up here is your expenses. So what you're going to be needing to buy or pay people to do in order to do your project. And that total is here. And then in your income, this would be, um, you know, projected ticket sales that you think you might have for that year, any external grants that you might get. And then of course you wanna put in that same number that matches up to this and also matches up to the number in your application of what you expect to get from this grant. I also recommend applying for other grants in your area. Um, you'll see here something like the Stewart's Shop Grant. Um, they do grants for the community. If you're looking for external funding, that shows the panelists that you're really looking to support this project in as much as you can, and you're really working to find support for it. Um, and that definitely makes a difference, but it is not required. Okay, so some tips for writing your budget. Again, I know I've already said this like 10 times, but write your budget and your project description together. This is to make sure that anything you're writing in your budget and anything you're writing in your project description are adding up, um, that there's no kind of confusion between the two or discrepancies. Make sure you definitely use the explanation column. That's something panelists look at on every single application form. When you download the template from our website, you can use Excel or Google Sheets, uh, but make sure to submit it as a PDF. And again, reference those guidelines throughout this entire process to see what is funded and not funded. And feel free to send me your budget. It's really easy for me to just quickly look at your budget, make sure everything is adding up correctly and make sure that there's nothing in there that can't be funded through this grant that would make you ineligible. All right, so here's the application checklist. This is everything you need to include in your application in order to completely submit it and finalize it. First is your assigned application. Um, so that entire form filled out, your project budget, which we just looked at, your proof of county residency. So this would be something like a tax document, utility bill, so on. Your artistic resume and or bio, your letter of intent from project partners or venues, also your partnership letter and different 
documents that we went over in the last video. Okay, so finally is your work samples. Again, this is a really important part of your application and something that really will give an image to it and give the panelists some kind of like vision of what you're looking to do or what you've done in the past. So if you're submitting video, sound, readings, that's going to be a max of three minutes. And you can either upload an MP3 file or a Word or PDF file with up to three links in it. I definitely don't recommend sending like an hour long video because as I said, panelists are looking at dozens of applications at a time and they're not gonna have time to watch an entire hour, hour long video. If you have something that's condensed and just kind of gives a, a little taste of everything that you do. I know that sounds kind of difficult to do, but um, that's what you should be trying to go for here. For writing, it's a max of two pages and it must be part of a single PDF attachment. And then for visual arts, it's a max of 10 images, but it must be scanned as part of a single PDF attachment. If you have any questions about how to make a PDF, how to make a file smaller, definitely feel free to reach out to me, give me a call, I can help you out with those things. Okay, so moving on from how to apply to the review process. Your application, once it's submitted, is going to be reviewed by a panel of peers, so people from your county, people who are part of the arts community, and I'll get more into that in a moment, but the review criteria that they're going to be using to look at your application and assess it are the following, artistic merit, community, innovation, and administration. So firstly, for artistic merit, this would just be the quality of the artistic samples and the credentials of the artists or producers involved. This will definitely be shown, I mean, obviously through your artist samples, but also through the resumes of the artists or teachers or whatever it is involved in your project. Next is community, which is really important to the panelists. This includes service to underserved geographic areas and persons. We want to make sure to fund programs happening all over the entire county, not just in its major towns. Next would be cooperation with local artists and organizations. We're really looking for projects that are investing in their community and really looking to cultivate their communities, considering your community needs and interests. So if you're doing a project that doesn't really apply to your community um, and that people might not be interested in, that's something to definitely notice. And then free or low cost programming is also a plus. Next is innovation, so cultural diversity in your programming, diversity of arts experience, community outreach, non-duplication of comparable existing services or programs. Next would be administration, so this is a record of your programmatic success reasonable estimate of your expenses, evidence that you have in-kind support or contributions outside of just this grant, a capacity con to conduct the project and clearly defined objectives. So again, this will really be shown through your project descriptions and your proposal and how clearly you can state what you're wanting to accomplish, who the audience is, what you're doing, and how are you going to evaluate that? Those are all really important to the administration part. So some additional review criteria for arts education projects. For general criteria, this is for projects maybe happening not in school um, or with a different age range or something. The quality of the expertise and the appropriateness of the artists, the desired participant outcomes and the thoroughness of the proposed budget are criteria that the panelists will be looking at. For in-school projects, the additional criteria would be the degree to which the project will support New York State learning standards and enhanced learning in the arts. Making sure that the project takes place during regular school hours, the clarity, appropriateness, and feasibility of the evaluation plans, the clarity and appropriateness of educational and artistic goals, the degree to which teachers will participate in the project planning and implementation, and to make sure that the project does not appear to replace the role of a certified K-12 school teacher. So the general review process here, peer panels, again, will be reviewing your applications in each of your separate counties. They are panelists who are from your county, who are artists or are involved in the cultural community in some way. They are using the same guidelines that you are given to review what you are submitting. So make sure to really um, read those and have them with you as you apply. Panelists use a scoring rubric and then we'll vote yes or no for funding and provide a funding recommendation to Create's board. Oftentimes people think that I am some deciding factor in who gets a grant and who doesn't. Um, but no, we have a very solid process where 
your peers are involved in reviewing your program and your proposal, and then we'll give that recommendation to the CREATE board who will then approve it. Um, and then once the board approves it, then we move forward with funding people. So if you are a returning applicant, one important part of your application would be how to demonstrate growth in your project. Um, so this would be expanding on your outreach plan, so involving other types of media. You know, sometimes people have been applying to this grant over and over for many years, and they haven't um, considered other avenues like social media and that kind of thing. Also self-assessments. So this is important for returning and new applicants. Um, surveying your participants. So, you know, artists that you're involving in your workshops or musicians who are going to be performing with you, your audience members, and seeing just what they think about the entire process, how the project is being run. And then finally, targeting your audience. So identifying and responding to the needs in your community. Maybe over time, your community has changed, especially in the past year with a lot of growth to our region um, and a lot of people moving to this area, maybe you will need to shift the kind of project that you're doing to serve your community better. Okay, so for projects happening in 2022, please make sure to submit your application by December 17th, 2021 at 11.59. And also make sure to press submit. Sometimes people will work on a draft and just think that it was submitted make sure you definitely check before the submission deadline because if it's not fully submitted, we won't look at it. Um, and if you try to submit it after this date, you won't be eligible to submit anymore. So really make sure to have this deadline written down 100 times and really <laughs> get in your project by that time. So once you submit your application um, and the peer reviews it, and if you receive this grant, this is what is expected of you as a grantee. So if you receive the grant, you'll receive a notification from us saying that you have been selected by the panel and approved by our board to receive this funding. And it will give you 10 days to either accept the grant or not. Following those 10 days, we'll then send out the checks. Um, we have that 10 day period just in case anyone tries to appeal the grant if they didn't receive it or if someone um, has ended up needing to cancel their project and returns the funds. We have that time period just to kind of deal with any things that pop up like that. If you do receive the grant, you'll have to attend an award ceremony to receive the grant award. Last year, we did this award ceremony virtually because of COVID-19. We aren't sure what is going to happen in the next year. So just keep that in mind. You will have to credit CREATE and NISCA on all promotional materials. Um, so in your contract that you'll be sent if you receive the grant, It'll have a, a brief sentence there that you'll need to include on anything, just crediting the NISCA statewide community regrant program and create as the administrator of that program. And then send any promotional materials, any event dates to me. This will allow us to track what you're doing with this funding um, for our records, but also we can come and visit your projects. Um, so in that vein, you might be audited by CREATE staff or grant panelists um, or other volunteers through CREATE who can report on your project. Um, this sounds kind of scary, but it really isn't. It's just saying you know, how many people were there, that it happened. We just want to make sure that the funding that's being used in our community is really being used. So we all know, especially coming out of COVID-19, that projects change sometimes much more than you think they will. If that happens, that's totally okay. Just make sure to keep in constant contact with us and we can really help you through any of those changes. If you do end up changing any part of your program or your budget, we will just send you a revised program and budget form where you can list all of those changes and the dates that they happened. Um, please, when you do this form, fill it out with all of the details that you can, including you know, what the original project was, and then what we're looking to do moving forward. Finally, once you've finished your entire project, you will have to complete a final report. This is really important, especially if you want to reapply to this funding in future years, because if you do not complete a final report um, before the next time you apply, you won't be eligible. OK, 
Okay, so support for grantees. As a grantee, you automatically get promotion through the Create newsletter and social media. So any of those promotional materials that you send us um, for our records, we will also include in our newsletter. We'll send it out to whoever we think um, would be interested. We also have our professional development workshop series that is designed for grantees. We really try to listen to what people are struggling with, what people want to learn in their areas um, and form these workshops. They are monthly um, throughout the spring, summer, and fall. So keep an eye out on our website for future dates. And then you also get resources like promotional contacts, um, any one-on-one -on -one meetings you want to have with me or with other Create staff. As a grantee, you also get different resources from us like promotional contacts, any advice that you are looking for or support or just a second person to have an opinion, um, any advice about grant applications outside of CREATE and brainstorming meetings with me, the grant manager or anyone else on our staff. A few final tips and reminders. So again, your project descriptions should reflect the grant guidelines, have a clear outreach and marketing plan, have a clear and consistent budget, and again, write that budget with your project description. Try to use clear and descriptive language as much as possible. And also include flexibility and backup plans in response to COVID-19. There is a question in the application asking about that. Um, you know, moving forward, we aren't sure what the future holds. So it's just important to have our bases covered. OK, so this concludes creates grant info video series. Uh, thanks for sticking through it. I know it's a lot of information to process all at once. So, you know, I hope you were able to take your time um, at your pace and go through these videos and that you were able to, to get some information from it. If you have any questions about anything in these videos, feel free to reach out to me at mave at createcouncil.org. In addition, these videos were mandatory in order to apply to the program, but we do have optional Q&A sessions happening throughout Green, Columbia, and Schoharie counties in October and November ahead of that deadline. That's a great time to meet other people who are applying, um, have some time with me just to ask any questions that you have, et cetera. If you want to meet with me one-on-one -on -one for any technical assistance, like with your application itself, the brainstorm ideas or review drafts, please send your request to me at this email. If you do need any help, please just remember to keep that at least two weeks before that final deadline so I can make sure to give you my full attention. Thank you so much for your interest in the Community Arts Grants at Create Council. I'm so excited that you're interested in, in pursuing your project here with us. If you're a returning person or if you're a new applicant, welcome. And again, feel free to reach out to me with any questions. And I look forward to seeing your applications. All right, thanks everyone. Good luck.